Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. We have been wanting this rain for days and days and days, and on the night we don't need it, here it comes. We'll look at storm chances ahead of opening day. The legal back and forth continues between protesters and the Detroit Public Schools Community District. Protesters trying to stop summer school, the district trying to keep summer school open. I'll have the latest in the court wranglings. Okay, Paula, but we begin with intense police body camera video of the Detroit police officer opening fire on a suspect wanted for shooting four people celebrating a birthday. And that shooting happened in the area of East Warren and Outer Drive on the city's east side after a high speed chase. And now we're getting our first look at the chaotic moments right before the shots were fired. Defender Sean Lay is going to walk us through the video. But first, Sean, you got new insight into what's behind this uptick that we've seen in shootings. Absolutely. The chief telling us tonight that the streets are flooded with people armed with guns to make his point. He says from June 22nd to July 19th, police taking off the streets 537 illegal guns. They made 473 carrying concealed weapons arrests and just last week arrested 128 people for having a concealed weapon. Now I want to show you the video release today of last week's officer involved shooting. We put a clock up on your screen so you can see how much time this officer had to decide to shoot or not to shoot. <laughs> Six seconds, six. That is the amount of time a Detroit police officer had from opening his door to making the split second decision to use deadly force. Watch again. From pursuit to crash to foot chase to a suspect being fatally shot. For an officer to make a decision to use fatal force, that's a decision that many times is made in the just a hair of a second. This fatal shooting happened last Thursday. I would ask any of your viewers, your listeners, put yourself in that officer's shoes just for one second. Detroit police in car and body cameras can put you in the officer's shoes. Police were watching a man wanted for shooting four teens, killing two of them. Then the chase was on, hitting a police cruiser, driving the wrong way down a street, driving on the sidewalk, almost hitting people. When they crash, here's what the officer could see. A gun in the man's hand. Then as he's running, the gun is pointed back at officers more than once. The chief says the officer feared for his life. Right there, stop. Now you can see clearly what I articulate during the fast moving uh, video. He is pointing the weapon directly at our officer. I think we've just uh, we've just lost Sean's uh, live shot there. OK, uh, we'll obviously continue to follow that story and the reaction to what we saw and as they will learn more as they go over all the body cam video. All right now to the, this next story, the uh, body of the late Congressman John Lewis now at the U.S. Capitol building in Washington. It is the beginning of a full week of tributes to the civil rights icon. Lawmakers, civil rights leaders and others gathered this afternoon as Lewis's casket was escorted into the rotunda where he now lies in state here at home. Chief Chief James Craig paid tribute to Lewis at today's press conference. I just want to take a moment to honor the legacy of the late U.S. Representative John Lewis, who served to fight the injustices by nonviolent means. We offer our prayers and condolences to his family, his friends, and the United States of America. Coming up at 5.30, we'll have more on the late Representative John Lewis's final return to the U.S. Capitol. Now to the latest on coronavirus. The higher trend in cases continues here in Michigan. 488 new cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed over the past 24 hours. And along with that, the state reports five more deaths. Today marks the start of a new week for summer school students at DPSCD. That's after a judge ordered all of those students to be tested for COVID-19. So the students who haven't been tested or are awaiting results were told to stay home. And a group of protesters is now taking the district back to court because of it. Paula Tutman has the very latest on the back and forth battle to keep students in the classroom. There's just no sign of this letting up. The protesters say they're going to keep going all the way until summer school ends until August 6th if they have to. Incidentally, Dr. VT is saying the same thing, and all of this is playing out in court. No, no children. No. 
Today, the protests moved from the bus yard to the schoolyard. Teachers and parents who are also members of the activist group BAM, or by any means necessary, moved to Renaissance High School in Detroit. No dead children. Close the school down. Protesters and administration for the Detroit Public Schools Community District have been locked in a heated legal match. Protesters trying to stop summer school because they say it's not safe. Administration trying to keep summer school open because they say it is as safe as it can possibly be. This weekend, BAM filed more court documents claiming that the district is playing a game of word distortion by not having all 600 plus summer school students tested for COVID as required in the temporary restraining order. The district filed a response document today that says in all 341 students have been tested. The number of those children testing positive remains at two. The district says that while it waits for updated numbers that it should get today, those students who have not been tested yet were not allowed to return to school today, thereby keeping the spirit of the temporary restraining order, or TRO, intact. Both sides claim a game of semantics. But what ultimately happens in federal court will not stay in federal court on this particular case. The final decision could have reverberations on in-person or face-to-face -face learning for districts across the nation. Paula Tutman, Local 4. All right, Paula, we will stay on it day by day. Let's move, though, to the, the muggy week after the muggy weekend we just had. Now this muggy start to the work week. Yeah, and uh, now we're seeing some rain in spots around town. We really need it, but just not for the Tigers game yeah. later tonight. Of all days, <laughs> right? Exactly. I mean, the timing is just not good, uh, but you got to take it where you can get it. And the cold front is not yet through, and that's why we do have showers and a few thunderstorms starting to pop. Most of these are right now in our north zone, but you look further down that line, there's a little bit more development. It's just not quite as robust there uh, from Lansing south, so we'll see how much of this is actually going to fill in as it works its way through a fairly warm and humid air mass that's on top of us. Chances are likely going to last, unfortunately, till the end of the game uh, that's over at Comerica Park. It's a 7-10 first pitch, and we'll have chances at least through about 8 o'clock. As we get closer to nine, that front should be through and we'll see at least drier conditions from the uh, rain standpoint, not from the humidity. That doesn't go down until tomorrow. Coming up, we'll talk about some cooler temperatures finally in the seven day forecast. It's all ahead, guys. All right, Ben. Well, the field is perfectly manicured. Of course, there has been just mentioned a <laughs> threat of rain. These are live pictures from Sky 4 over Comerica Park opening day in July mm -hmm. and one very big thing missing. Just not really the same uh, without the fans. But I guess we will take baseball as we can get it. We'll take what we can get is right. It's beautiful out there. Let's get out to uh, Bernie for a little preview of tonight's game against the Royals and some uh, very big news involving other teams too, Bernie. Yeah, sort of like uh, those rain clouds. Now this cloud hanging over Major League Baseball. Tigers start 7-10 tonight. That game is still on more in a moment, but MLB suffered their first COVID outbreak today. 14 members of the Miami Marlins tested positive, so their game against the Orioles in Miami tonight has been postponed. Also, the Marlins were in Philly yesterday, so tonight's Phillies-Yankees game in Philadelphia also postponed. Closer to home, Tigers are now 2-1 and one after taking 2-3 and three in Cincinnati over the weekend. We've got highlights. Tigers wins both late, both heroic. Here's C.J. Crone, ninth inning home run yesterday. That led them to a 3-2 win over the Reds. Tonight, Michael Fulmer gets the start. It's opening day or evening here in Detroit. Steve Garagiola normally outside grilling hot dogs with the fans and hydrating. But tonight, that's not the case. Steve says it's a bit of a different opening day. Between Tiger Stadium and Comerica Park, I've covered almost every Tiger home opener over the past 35 years. There's no disputing, this one is very different. The biggest difference is that around Comerica Park today, it's a lot quieter than a typical opening day. Go, Go Tigers! Some fans, like this dad and his son, have come to the ballpark because being part of opening day is tradition. And you don't mess with tradition. We're excited, we're down here to get some gear. We wish we could come for the game. We just wanted to come soak up a little atmosphere check out the stadium. Opening day is a tradition for us. We come down every year. If we don't get to go to the game, we go to a party or we just come down and hang out because we love the Tigers. No fans will be going inside for the game today. Of course, every year I talk to folks who come to opening day for everything but the game. Are we going to the game? We are not. Go 
Going to the game? No, sir. Going to the game? No, sir, we are not. What are we doing here? We're here for the festivities. We're here for the pregame. The festivities. There is very little in the way of festivities around the ballpark on this opening day, but there are a few good things. No big traffic jam to deal with. No waiting to take a picture with the big tiger. And here's something. On July 27th of 2019, the Tigers were 31 and a half games out of first place. July 27, 2020, the Tigers are in first place. I know, they've only played three games, but let's not quibble over details. So this home opener, I'll watch on TV just like every other fan. I've got my sound effects ready. Tiger home run. Yeah. Kansas City home run. Ooh. And the best part, when the time comes, there's no line at the bathroom. This is not all bad. Go Tigers. I'm Steve Garagiola, Local 4. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> he needs to market the, right, uh, the seven, sound effect start. The big Yeah. One of the big stories today is going to be Michael Fulmer has not won a Comerica in over two years. Yeah. Back from Tommy John surgery. You'll hear from him coming up in sports. All right. And, ben and Ron Gardenhire. Uh, exactly. And Ben will keep an eye on the weather for us as we move through this uh, next 90 minutes of news. All right, Bernie. Well, skaters say they're being blamed, but it is not their fault. Yeah, who they say is responsible for trashing this popular Detroit park over the weekend. Also a critical day in the search for a coronavirus vaccine. Ahead, we'll see which large-scale trial is now underway in the U.S. and how researchers hope this one will be the one to protect against the virus. Rod. Sometimes starting a business requires some serious inspiration. When they murdered my sister, it was, it was the worst thing in my life. And a Detroit woman did just that, used her sister's death to inspire her. But now thieves have attempted to steal her dream. We'll let you know they can.